And we're having a little trouble with our signal there, but as Desmond was saying, it certainly is a good opportunity once they get off of the freeway to try to either do a pit maneuver or possibly even use uh, spike strips at this point. But uh, we're looking at, looks like Desmond, this driver got back on the 10. Yeah, and unfortunately on the volume side. So just as I was saying, Amy, about uh, how, you know, he was on the lighter volume side, now he's going to be encountering a little bit of traffic, especially as we approach the bottleneck with the 605. So doubling back to the east, this pursuit that came out of the Rialto area, and now, you know, pretty solidly into LA County, just when it looked like he was going to continue maybe towards downtown, decided to get off the freeway and right back on, on the eastbound side. So, you know, no rhyme or reason, but CHP definitely sticking with it. And CHP not likely, I, I, they're, they're gonna stick with this one for as long as it takes. If, if there's anything we've seen, especially within the last six months or so, uh, CHP does not like to let pursuits go. Uh, we've seen them even keeping up with motorcycles on the freeway up to 130 miles an hour. Saw that twice in one week. Wow. And it was really a, a shocking thing to see, but to, to see, you know, cruisers keeping up. But uh, they are the most determined of any agency, I would say, you know, regardless of the, the, the driving situation with the suspect, you know, a lot of times we see LA County sheriffs or LAPD, if a suspect is driving really, really dangerously, they'll back off and they'll watch it from the ground. We don't see that with, with CHP. They have a tendency to, to stick with these things. And even when they get off the freeway, they can stick with it on, on surface streets as well. But we are eastbound on the 10, gonna be encountering some heavy traffic. So we'll see what this person decides to do. The heavy traffic can actually work in CHP's favor if they want to coordinate something with spike strips. We've seen that before where they're able to use that traffic to their advantage. Now, I haven't heard any talk about that yet, so we'll just have to see what uh, what CHP's next move is going to be on this one, Amy. Yeah, Desmond, and you mentioned sometimes they uh, really uh, fall back and let that driver slow down a bit, but with this person accused of driving under the influence, it's probably not something that they want to do. But I have to say, if this driver is actually driving under the influence, uh, they're doing actually a pretty good job. We're not seeing a lot of reckless driving. The speeds were quite fast at one point, but uh, this driver certainly seemed in control of the vehicle that we have seen since you've been overhead, which is certainly uh, a better case scenario if someone is in fact driving under the influence. But there have been a lot of uh, interesting facts that have been coming out about this driver and perhaps that they dr called on themselves. We have not confirmed that, but we are watching this pursuit take place now on the 10. Plenty of traffic out there on a Friday afternoon after three o'clock and uh, certainly has the speeds uh, much slower at this point because earlier on this driver was really uh, reaching some high rates of speed. So it's good to see that it is at least slower. It does look like Desmond, this driver had the window down and maybe their arm out of the window. Was I seeing that correctly? Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I think I saw him actually throw something out of the window there, Amy. It, it looked like it might've been a, a, a drink container, I think, unless he just happened to hit something in the roadway and it got kicked up. But um, I was actually glancing over at my screen just to see where exactly we are. And then it, it Maybe he, he tossed something out of the window. Uh, and uh, so we're crossing the 605 right now. And it, yeah, okay, I'm just hearing CHP confirm it was a bag. There was a bag that was thrown, and so now they're going to have another unit respond and investigate that. So they're going to have to stop all lanes of that busy eastbound 10 to see what exactly the suspect dropped so casually out of the window. You can add a littering charge now uh, to you know the litany of, of charges going on here. but. Now we're stopped on the eastbound 10, pretty close to the 605. And you were, you know, we were referencing, Amy, we were not seeing a lot of the, the, the high speeds or the wheat darting in and out of lanes uh, around people, but we'll see if that changes now that we're getting into some uh, heavier traffic, a lot of stop traffic, stop and go, if they decide to start getting crazy and drive on the right-hand shoulder or, or in the center divider uh, and, and where this person's going to be headed. and. Almost as we see with, it, it seems to be almost every single pursuit or vehicle involved in a pursuit, Amy, we've got dark tinted windows, uh, you know, on the sides and in the back, something that CHP really hates to see. But as we try to get a look through the front, uh, it looks like there is just one person uh, in this vehicle as we head back towards Baldwin Park in West Covina, Amy. And, and Desmond, we do want to uh, 
show our viewers that video from just a moment ago when the driver looked to be throwing something out of the window. You see it there, right there? Yeah. Uh, he lets uh, something out of the window there. It looks like a bag, some type of paper, um, getting rid of something. And as you mentioned, another cruiser will stop and pick that up to determine what, in fact, that actually was. But uh, this driver is certainly in the midst of uh, plenty of Friday afternoon traffic going much slower than uh, the driver was going a short time ago when speeds were really reaching high rates. And we have been told that this is a suspected DUI driver and uh, has led police on a bit of a chase here, mostly on the freeway, which um, a lot of times officers say that that is actually a better situation for them, safer for the public when they are on the freeway as opposed to those side streets where you have pedestrians walking and uh, people really unsuspecting of this uh, car going at a really high rate of speed. So here on the freeway, People can see those uh, black and whites behind this black Mitsubishi lights, sirens on. So people are a little more aware of what's happening. But again, just going uh, about 33 miles per hour at this point, Desmond. Yeah, just going with traffic and it, at least, you know, kind of relieved to see that and not, uh, you know, immediately in, endangering anybody in, in that way. I mean, other than the fact that this is a, a suspected DUI driver, but like you said, at least not you know slamming on the gas pedal and and trying to to you know really uh, blast by everybody traffic should actually well it's going to be kind of what we would call choppy traffic here it's going to kind of speed up and slow down it's not really stop and go at this point it looks like it may get a little bit heavier as we approach the kellogg hill we're approaching baldwin park boulevard right now as you approach the kellogg hill where you get that incline you t typically start to see a little bit of slower traffic there's also some ongoing construction in that area now the window coming down and we can get a pretty mm. decent look at the suspect I himself and yeah it just looks like he's just just kind of cruising just kind of content to to go along with the speed of traffic and and uh, you know leave chp on this and uh, we're now hearing that uh, chp is officially taking over in the air as well so they pretty much have uh, the, the the exclusive on this pursuit now that they're relieving San Bernardino County Sheriff's Deputies Chopper that followed them all the way out of Rialto. And so now we're headed back towards the Inland Empire in some pretty slow Friday traffic eastbound on the 10 headed through Baldwin Park. Yes, and as you mentioned, Desmond, this all began in Rialto of a call of a suspected drunk driver or a driver under the influence uh, in this black Mitsubishi. It was going quite fast at times, but uh, Slow down along with traffic here and uh, moving over into the slow lane, wondering if this driver is thinking about getting off of the freeway at this point because there is, oh, nope, weaving back on over, staying on, it looks like at this point, uh, Desmond. But uh, certainly uh, slow traffic out there, which is a good thing. But unfortunately, on the freeway, it's really tough for law enforcement to use spike strips or certainly not a uh, pit maneuver. So they will have to just... Uh, you know, stay on this car from the ground and in the air. Yeah, you know, potentially you just have to wait until this person runs out of gas or gets to wherever they want to go and maybe take a wrong turn into a cul-de-sac or maybe they'll head back to their house and, and you know, surrender there. A lot of times we see suspects uh, go back to where where they live or maybe to, to a relative's house or, or something like that. This is just a very peculiar one uh, considering, you know, some of the the, the, the crosstalk that we heard with, with CHP, um, you know, possibly with this person uh, calling themselves in. We're still trying to confirm uh, those details, but really, really weird one. And, and, you know, out of, we also followed this one all the way into LA County. It wasn't really until we got to Diamond Bar did Rialto give this one over to uh, CHP. And now that they have, again, CHP will stick th with this one th for the duration. And, uh, the hope would be that, you know, as, as soon as if this person does get off the freeway, that the, uh, an opportunity will be presented immediately for CHP to be able to just go right in and use the pit maneuver and, and kind of disorient that driver and uh, hopefully stall the vehicle out. But we'll just have to, to see how, how that plays out. Definitely not going to be happening on the freeway. It is possible to use spike strips on the freeway, but not right now. Not that, you know, like, traffic's kind of picking back up in this area to about 50 miles an hour, and it looks like it's going to, be with this until at least the bottom of the Kellogg Hill is if he goes back towards the 57 
That's another choke point, the 10, 57, 71 interchange, especially on a Friday afternoon. They may be coordinating something up ahead, don't want to tip CHP's hand, but uh, if they are coordinating anything uh, up ahead as far as a spike strip, that would probably be a pretty good place to, to set up. Yeah, and oftentimes on the freeway, we will see other cruisers uh, really trying to divert traffic, doing those round robins, getting the other cars to slow down so that they have a bit of a vantage point uh, on the driver that they are trying to stop. And it's funny, Desmond, you were saying that this was so unusual, but, uh, you know, maybe 30 minutes ago, we were covering a pursuit of a stolen fire vehicle. So it is one of those Friday afternoons where we are getting some unusual pursuits. And if this person did, in fact, call authorities on themselves about drinking at a bar and then getting on the road, that's definitely one for the record books. But uh, this driver going about uh, 58 miles per hour, going right with traffic and uh, doesn't appear to be wanting to slow down at all. And traffic doesn't seem to be too slow at this point, Desmond. Yeah, now traffic's actually beginning to uh, pick back up even for Friday. Um, you can see, you know, quite a bit of space between vehicles here. Still only about 45 miles an hour, but just kind of out here cruising, you know. Uh, why is he leading authorities on this pursuit? And and why did he p possibly, you know, call this in himself if this person is having, a, you know, some sort of a, a mental br breakdown or or what? It's uh, there, it looked like maybe he might have just flicked something out the window there. Uh, if it was a, a cigarette butt or something, but he's, you know, mostly had the window up, but then he rolls it down for a little bit to get a little bit of fresh air and then rolls it back up. And we're just we're cruising along is the only way to put it here. He's not even, you know, darting in and out of any lanes and mostly going with, with the speed of traffic. We did see him earlier in West Covina looking like he was going to get off the freeway and then decided the last second to stay on the freeway. Very common maneuver. A lot of times these suspects, if they think that they can, you know, d ditch the police by making a last second maneuver, but you see how much distance CHP has, and that's by design as well, in case the suspect does try to pull a, a sudden maneuver like they were doing earlier on the freeway. And you can see all of the units involved in this as I widen out. You've got three in the immediate pursuit, and there's probably units farther back, maybe a mile or so, that may actually be slowing traffic down to, to prevent anyone else from, from getting uh, involved in this. And we'll see shortly if CHP is going to be, you know, trying any maneuver to get this over. And uh -oh. here you go. He's waving. Know, motioning like. for, yeah, waving out the window. And, you know, just very, very casual here, almost as if, as if nothing's really going on. It's just so interesting, the various demeanors that we can see with these suspects, sometimes just almost in denial like anything is is happening behind them and other times driving like like a total lunatic but mostly at the speed limit especially since we picked this up uh, speeds to our knowledge have not eclipsed 80 miles an hour and we haven't seen that since we got in this now about 15 minutes ago as we get ready to leave West Covina and head for the Kellogg Hill there may be some spike strips in this uh, suspects immediate future we'll just have to see and we'll see what traffic is like on the other side of the Kellogg Hill if uh, the suspect continues on this, traje on this traje trajectory. Yeah, certainly a, a tough thing to really maneuver here, putting out those spike strips on the freeway and uh, making sure that the driver stays in the appropriate lane to get those spike strips uh, hit the way that they would like them to be. Of course, that is what happened on the last pursuit we were covering with that uh, stolen fire vehicle, but. Uh, that was on surface streets on the freeway. It's a whole new ball game and certainly uh, much faster speeds than on those surface streets. And you can really contain where that person is going. But this time, you know, you, he's got a number of lanes that he can be in. And, uh, you know, certainly authorities will do what they can to try to get this driver to stop. But it's certainly not going to be an easy task as we can already see. Yep. And, uh, traffic is actually really loosening up here nicely. We'll see how fast this the suspect wants to go as we get ready to climb the Kellogg Hill. Kind of surprising going underneath the freeway here. And we're going to start climbing here shortly and you'll start to see a lot of slow traffic on the right side of the freeway with uh, big rigs. Actually an area where a lot of vehicles stall out on this hill. Very, very common uh, occurrence. But this guy not stalled out up to almost 70 miles an hour kind of keeping it mostly to the left side of the freeway you know and, and if the suspects in the middle of the roadway it's 
it's going to make it ne next to impossible for CHP to use spike strips because they, they you know, they want to do that either from the center divider into the carpool lane or onto the right side of the freeway. And they're not going to be able to do it really at uh, peak traffic time on a Friday unless they get into a situation where there's really slow traffic and they can uh, slow things down and I, 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 again, I don't want to give away CHP's uh, tactics too much, but we see situations where uh, you know they're able to use maybe big rigs to kind of hide behind and slow traffic and, and kind of jump out at the last second and uh, get those spikes down. But much more precarious operation on the freeway, no, about, no doubt about it, as opposed to trying to do it on a surface street. Yeah, we certainly have to be careful, Desmond, about uh, revealing what uh, CHP is, is thinking about or trying to do because you never know if this driver is on the phone with somebody who's at home and watching our air right now and could be feeding that information. So we certainly don't want to uh, show the CHP's hand here, but certainly, as you mentioned, it will be tricky no matter what to get this uh, driver to stop with spike strips. But this, again, is a pursuit that we've been following now. Uh, a suspected DUI driver and uh, at times going at very high rates of speed, but then uh, now been really sticking with traffic. Uh, we see he's uh, sticking his hand out of the window a little earlier. We saw him drop what appeared to be a little bag or some type of paper out of the window and now a window rolled down and he at one point was motioning like he was telling someone to come on and uh, We've got the video now of him dropping whatever that was, perhaps a bag or some type of paper out of the window. You can see, oh, there you can see uh, he's drinking something in a can. We don't know what yeah, that is. Yeah. We certainly don't want to uh, jump to any conclusions about whether or not it is a can of beer. Maybe it's a can of soda or even a can of sparkling water. We don't know, but he is drinking something while driving behind the wheel. And this driver is suspected of driving under the influence. Yeah, and just again, so so casual about uh, everything right now, and uh, you know, content to to mostly go the speed limit. But you know, now he's drinking whatever he's drinking, and and you know, we are talking about someone uh, suspected DUI, so p p potentially very alarming uh, at, at this point. But we're coming up over the Kellogg Hill, Amy. We're going to hit some uh, the heaviest traffic we've seen so far. So we'll definitely see what happens here if uh, CHP is prepared for that, if they're going to try to make a move uh, with anything or if uh, this person is going to give up or go with it and just continue to kind of pretend, like I said, like like this isn't happening right now. It's uh, very, very strange. Now, Desmond, uh, pursuit could you see? Not, uh, I was ahead. wondering when that window was down, could you see what appeared to be like a white bag kind of waving in the wind that might have been uh, kind of in the center console area? Maybe a bag of some sort. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll see if we can get back to the front of the vehicle uh, here in a second. It looked like there might have been a lot of stuff potentially in, in the, the passenger seat. And we did already see this person throw something out the window. What CHP described as, as a bag of some sort, unclear what was in there. Maybe it was just his lunch. Maybe that was his lunch. <laughs> and now he's washing it down with, with, uh, with, with whatever it is that, that he's drinking there. Um, it, it looked almost, you know, this is as far as zoomed in as we could get, but it and almost, well, there down. he goes. And he's going to drop that too. Is looks he like going to he looks uh, like get he's another? emptying out the, the, whatever was in it, right? He, yeah, uh, and oh, there it goes. There it and is. it looks like that was a can. I can, can say that. It yeah. kind of almost looked like a car to me at first, but that looked, looked to be a cylindrical. So dropping a can out the window, that's at least twice now that this, uh, alleged DUI driver has has littered on the roadway as well. A very, very hefty fine, which uh, CHP will be happy to add to the uh, litany of charges uh, to this person. I think it's a, at least $1,000 per incident for, for wow. finding, but just so brazen too, you exactly. know, doing that right in front of officers. Like, what is what is this guy? It's it just taunting officers, uh, essentially, at this point. That's what uh, I was going to say. Getting into some really heavy, yeah. Uh, he really seems like he's ta taunting, taunting those officers. officers. Or, yeah, taunting officers and and then just it, ignoring them. We saw him kind of waving at them earlier, almost like "Come on, come and get me!" Like he was he was kind of motioning them forward. Uh, it, it looked like. Yeah. Uh, so we're coming up to to the Kellogg interchange. That's what they call the 107157, a particularly congested interchange, and it's going to be awfully slow from this point 
uh, to at least the edge of LA County over towards Montclair, Claremont past the Fairplex. It's really kind of stop and go traffic. Uh, it would seem like a good opportunity for, uh, you know, maybe CHP to try to come in and, and box them in, but that's not a, a tactic that we see often uh, with any agency. And I'm actually not positive that that's uh, within protocol. We've, we've, it kind of depends on what the person's wanted for as well. You know, the, the, the more serious the charge, uh, the more aggressive we tend to see agencies get. We, we, there hasn't been any talk about this person being armed or, or anything like that. I mean, it's still obviously a serious want, D DUI driver, uh, and out here endangering the public and have to wonder if that was an alcoholic beverage that he just so flagrantly tossed out the window uh, right in front of CHP. And staying over towards the right, so uh, maybe getting ready to make a transition. Yeah, he's going to be transitioning here. Uh, we'll see if this is if this is going to go to the South 57 or the uh, either the North or South 57 or to the southbound 71. The 57 is pretty wide open right here. The 71 is not, mm -hmm. and they're saying South 57. I just heard CHP. So this is going to take us towards uh, Diamond Bar and possibly Orange County depending on how far this person wants to take it. Much more wide open conditions you can see instantly and now back on the gas pedal. And actually pretty high speeds here, Amy. This is the highest speed we've seen so far. Oh, wow, yes. Definitely picking up speed here, Desmond, which always makes me so nervous when these cars are going this fast and you know other motorist drivers out there have no idea what's going on and the car comes up on them so quickly. And you know, as we were both talking, uh, about it really appeared that this driver was trying to taunt those officers behind him. We do have video of what just happened where that driver at one point was waving to them, like telling them to come on. And then we saw uh, him drop off, uh, drop out that bag. We just see that. And then we saw him there drinking while driving. We don't know what he is drinking, but he's definitely drinking. And it almost seems like he rolled down the window so everyone could see that. And then after, uh, emptying the can it appeared he dropped that can as if really just really just kind of throwing it in the face of the officers that are following him and you know we do know that uh he was wanted for uh driving under the influence uh, suspected of driving under the influence and perhaps that is why he's acting this erratically uh but uh certainly picking up the speeds and uh certainly makes it a little more uh, nerve-wracking because you just don't know how much this person may have had to drink and it certainly makes it a little more dangerous for all those other drivers that are in this area yeah absolutely amy we are going to hit a little bit of heavier traffic as well so the driver will be forced to slow down a little actually i kind of amend that very very slight traffic as we come to the merger with the the west 60 and the south 57 and then the driver will have another decision on which way uh, they want to go. And I'm listening to dispatchers as well. You know, there's a lot that goes on uh, behind the scenes. I need to, to give them some credit as well. Uh, hearing the officers talk with the dispatchers, and now dispatchers are going to be contacting uh, CHP in Orange County to alert them of the uh, situation so that they can stand by, uh, you know, along any off-ramps and see if they need to block traffic or if they're going to coordinate anything with, with spike strips or, or what. And, um, and, and again, though, with these, with, aha. Uh -huh. Desmond, uh, I know you're listening to what they're uh, saying. Y y yes, um, possibly, uh, again, uh, uh, it, it's, they're, they're thinking that someone else may be in the car. Uh, that's mm -hmm. all I want to uh, say at this point. We was just hearing some, some radio traffic, but we saw in the passenger seat, we didn't see anybody uh, in there, but, uh, uh, yeah, someone apparently called. This is okay. I, I, I'll just pass it along because this is someone who called 911, and they told 911 that they believe that this uh, driver may have a child oh. on, on his lap. And now w I didn't see uh, a, ch a child when we saw the window all the way down, but kind of hard to say because we have to keep you know a little bit of distance here. We have to. Uh, stay at a certain altitude, so I, I couldn't see a, a child. Desmond, uh, that very is very alarming. What I was asking you about, I saw something in the car. It looked like it was right uh, to the side, almost to the console. It was white, 
and I could see something waving in the wind that was uh, being created from the window being open. And I wondered if it was a bag or some type of clothing. I certainly hope that there is not a child in this car with this driver who is suspected of driving under the influence, but you could certainly see something in there and it looks like a white material, whether that was a plastic bag or clothing. Uh, I was hoping that you might be able to get a closer look at that, but uh, you can see uh, him dropping that can on the right side. That's from a little earlier. Right now, the live image there on the left side of the screen, that driver sitting at an intersection and um, following the rules of the road here, uh, stopping for that red light. You wonder at times like this if law enforcement could take advantage of it. But as you mentioned earlier, Desmond, you don't know if this person is armed. Uh, we don't know now if there's someone else in the car with this person, perhaps a child, but it certainly changes things uh, for these officers who may have wanted to do a pit maneuver. Uh, if there's a child on this uh, driver's lap or to the side of this driver, that can be very dangerous for that child. But we do see that other uh, cruiser there to the side, uh, but they are not getting in front of that driver just yet. Yeah, that really does, you know, change the, the whole ball game here for CHP. We'll see if we can... Uh, uh, trying to get a look, unfortunately, just kind of with the reflection of the sun, we're not able to uh, get a very good look uh, inside. And as is uh, just always seems to be the case so frustratingly, the windows are, you know, practically pitch black. Uh, so uh, getting back onto the freeway here, we'll see. Uh, he was off of Grand Avenue, kind of the, the junction right there with the, the 60 and 57. And we're going, it looks like, back southbound. Uh, South 57, West 60, if he stays all the way to the right, I believe that's going to take him to the westbound 60. But extremely alarming now for CHP, especially if they were thinking about uh, spike strips or, or, or a pit maneuver. If, if that call into 911 is indeed true, and that's going to be difficult to confirm, then you know CHP is not going to uh, do a, a pit maneuver with with potentially a child, uh, in a, not even just in, in a car seat, but possibly in the driver's lap. That was what the caller said anyway that they saw, I guess, while the driver had uh, the window down. It is rolled up completely at the time right now, but we're southbound on the 57. So we're going to be leaving LA County and headed towards Orange County. And this is, a, you know, definitely taking a, a more tense turn based on that report into uh, 911, Amy. It sure does. Desmond, I mean, you hear that and your heart just sinks because you just worry about that child who is in that car. If in fact there is a child in the car and just how dangerous this is for that child. We don't know the age of the child, but we would suspect a small child if the child was on the driver's lap. Uh, we have not been able to get a clear image of whether or not there is someone else in the car. As uh, you can see here, the side windows are very, very dark and really impossible to see through. We were able to get a little look inside when the driver had their window down. I did not see a child Desmond, but I did see some type of white material uh, and it, it appeared to be flowing with the air that was coming through because of the window. Uh, and I was wondering if it was a bag perhaps, um, but uh, I certainly hope it is a bag and not a child. But unfortunately, someone has called and said that there was a child in this car with this driver. This pursuit again starting in Rialto. It was a call of a driver under the influence. We've seen this driver drop out a bag out of the window here on the right a little earlier. Uh, was drinking something from a can, then dropped that can in the roadway. Almost as if he was taunting the officers that were following him, dropping these items out the window. Of course, he could have easily kept them inside the car, but he's dropping them in front of the uh, cruisers that are behind him. At one point, the window was down and he was waving to the officers as if saying, come on, come up here. Uh, and now we see this pursuit again, picking up speeds. Um, and it really has taken on a different tone if there is, in fact, a child in that car with this driver, Desmond. Yeah, and we've covered a lot of ground uh, as as well here, Amy. We from Rialto to LA County to Santa, uh, the El Monte area and uh, back to the east and now down into Diamond Bar and, and obviously just hoping that, that the suspect is running low on gas. Uh, that's really, I think, the big hope uh, at this point that, that uh, hopefully there's not much gas in the tank and that, you know, the vehicle's just going to conk out uh, at some point. And, uh, the CHP, it's really hard to say with, with their tactics if they really suspect that if they have reason to suspect that there's a child in the car, especially that's not even in, in a safety seat or, or buckled in, that it's almost the only thing that they can do 
at this point is is wait for this person to give themselves up, go wherever they're going, or or run out of gas. Uh, again, I believe it's a Mitsubishi Lancer, kind of a, a rally type vehicle. Uh, not not as good as you would think on gas mileage because they actually have uh, some capability. You could kind of classify this as a as a type of uh, of sports car. So again, hopefully, uh, not a lot of gas in the tank and. You know, CHP is just going to have to follow this one as 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 far as as it goes, and you know it's it's totally up in the air to to say just how how long this could go on, how much gas is in the tank, and, and where this guy's headed. Certainly, the best case scenario, Desmond, is if this driver does in fact run out of gas soon. But uh, you know, at these speeds on the freeway, spike strips really not an option, and certainly not a pit maneuver now that they suspect that there may be a child in the car, certainly a dangerous situation. Uh, any way you look at it, uh, as you mentioned, the child not in a, a child car seat, but uh, the 911 caller saying that the child was in fact on that driver's lap, which is certainly dangerous in of itself, even if there weren't a pursuit going on, even if there wasn't alcohol involved, uh, driving with a child on your lap is certainly dangerous. And uh, this is just really tough to uh, hear and see. and. You know, we keep trying to look inside those uh, dark tinted windows to see what we can see, but it really is just difficult. These are some really dark windows and uh, we have not been able to actually see a child in there. I did see something white. It looked like it was flapping in the wind from the window being down, but I was thinking it was a plastic bag of some sort, but uh, four zero. Four it, zero. it could be, in fact, a child as a 911 caller has um, reported to dispatchers, but uh, this is certainly a tough one uh, to watch because you just don't know how desperate this driver is or perhaps how uh, intoxicated this person could be. Yeah, and you know, Amy, as we were you know, talking about with the last pursuit with, with the spike strips, the, the issue with using a spike strip in, in a situation, you know, potentially with a child in the car, it's not so much the spike strip itself because the spike strip is not going to, you know, completely blow the tire out and cause the vehicle to go out of control. The problem is, is uh, for one, how the driver might react after getting the, the spike strip. It might become extremely agitated and, you know, speed up and lose control at that point or, you know, potentially swerve out of the way at the last second and, you know, could, could end up plowing into another vehicle. So that is, I think, why spike strips are probably off the table, even though the spike strips themselves are designed to slowly let air air uh, out out of a tire as, as to prevent you know a, a sudden a catastrophic you know loss of pressure and, and losing control but there's just too many variables now potentially with a, a child in the car as we head southbound now through diamond bar actually now we're into the city of breas we're coming up near imperial highway and then we'll be through fullerton the 57 this is a wide open drive if he decides to take it into the heart of Orange County. If he heads down towards the Orange Crush, one of the most notoriously uh, congested interchanges in, in Southern California, the 5, 57, 22, a lot of options there. It could go southbound on the 5 or uh, east or west on the 22 towards either Garden Grove or Santa Ana. If he does continue, we may have some airspace issues that we'll have to uh, work out here, but we'll keep, keep with this one. If he continues south of the 91, we may have to our, our shot's not going to be as good as it is now until we can get down uh, towards the Orange Crush. There's actually protected, we'll just go ahead and say it, there's protected airspace uh, because of Disneyland right now that we're, we basically have to kind of uh, take very gingerly around and, and climb or either go around or, or climb way up to, to get around. So uh, just kind of doing some planning, seeing what happens. Uh, we'll kind of slow down a little bit as we approach the 91. If he takes the 91, that's going to be a, a, a pretty bad idea, eastbound 91. If, because, you know, Friday afternoon on the 91 into the Santa Ana Canyon could be a, a brutal drive as far as uh, slow traffic if he doesn't take the fast track lane. So a lot of options, though, coming up for this uh, this suspected DUI driver uh, that we certainly hope is low on gas. And we'll see if uh, these are units from L.A. County CHP that uh, may be handing this off to Orange County shortly. And Desmond, for our folks that are just joining us, this is a pursuit that began about 45 minutes ago in Rialto. A 911 call of a suspected DUI driver. Uh, we have seen this driver uh, rolling down the window, taunting. It, it appeared that uh, he was taunting the officers behind him, one point rolling down the window and motioning to them. And at this point, you can see on the right side of your screen, 
He dropped some type of a bag out of the window. A little later, we saw him drinking from a can, and then you see there, he dropped that can out of the window. And then there were reports from a 911 caller that there was actually a small child in the car with that driver. We have not been able to confirm that. These windows, as you can see, are very dark, and we cannot really see in that car at this point. But we did see something white in the car to uh, the right of the driver, and uh, I was hoping it was a plastic bag. I could see it waving when the window was down. Uh, hopefully just a bag, not a child, and uh, because that certainly makes this so much more dangerous, this driver, uh, if in fact is driving with a child on their lap, is certainly a very dangerous situation. And uh, we are seeing things get a little more, um, a little more reckless here, uh, making some interesting turns. You see again the windows down, Desmond. I don't know if you can see into that car oh, when the window was down. You could see something white there in the console area, but I, I don't know what that is. Um, I don't know if you were able to see Desmond inside the window when he rolled it down there. Just a moment. Uh, yeah, I, I tried to get a look there, Amy. It was just really difficult to see, and it was such a brief uh, period of time. But you saw this unit here that 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 just moved in here. This is now uh, CHP Orange County. So it uh, looks like they are indeed going to be taking over. So this is a fresh unit with a fresh tank of gas now that is going to be the uh, primary uh, in this one. You know, I mean, Amy, hopefully, you know, whoever called that into CHP, uh, you know, you, you, they, they just ha glanced really quickly because, you know, they're driving. They could, you know, peer in there, you know, too long. Hopefully they, hopefully they were just mistaken in what they saw. Uh, it's going to be, it, next to impossible for CHP to confirm that uh, at this point. They do have you know, cameras on uh, on their 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 choppers, and they actually also have a a fixed wing uh, overhead as well. I'm not sure the zoom capabilities of of those camera systems that CHP has on their aircraft, but I know that they also have an infrared type technology. Mm. I, 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 I'm not clear again as far as the extent of that technology, if it's able to get, uh, you know, multiple heat signatures or something, if, if that's if that's something that that they're capable of doing, I, I do know that they have at least uh, some degree of technology as far as 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 that goes. But uh, we're approaching the 91 freeway. We're going to see what this person decides to do. They're they're certainly acting like they're going to continue southbound on the 57 and towards. Uh, the heart of Orange County, Anaheim, uh, City of Orange, and beyond. So CHP, Orange County, they're now the ones, they're going to be the uh, primary in this. And, you know, they've been getting the information from the dispatchers, I'm sure, about the call into 911. And so they need to be very, very careful about how they approach uh, this pursuit that now heads from, you know, again, a lot of miles covered. We went from the Inland Empire to L.A. County and now down to pretty much the center of Orange County. And we're hoping, Desmond, that this driver did not have a full tank of gas because really running out of gas is going to be probably the best case scenario at this point because they cannot use spike strips at this point, cannot do a pit maneuver, and uh, really it would be too dangerous to try anything like that. So until this driver decides to uh, pull over and give up or runs out of gas, uh, authorities are really limited on what they can do at this point and uh, certainly a dangerous situation if there is in fact a child in this car with this driver. It's just unfortunate that the windows are so dark, Desmond, that we cannot see in and really get a good look at what's going on inside that car. But we do know the driver has rolled down the window a few times. And, and every time I see that window go down, Desmond, I have to tell you, I'm just trying so hard to see inside that car to see if in fact there is someone else inside that car with them. Yeah, uh, very, very frustrating, Amy. It's almost uh, almost every single pursuit we've been covering for the last year I, has been uh, nearly without exception, you know, vehicles with not just tinted windows, but, you know, practically, you know, pitch black uh, windows. And uh, again, the, uh, the the only hope being that, that this person is going to run out of gas shortly. Yeah, we see a few more units now getting it involved as well. Uh, we crossed the 91, so we are on the uh, southbound 57 Orange County CHP. Uh, going to take this one as as far as as it goes. Uh, uh, we've covered so many miles at at this point. If if this person even just had you know a, a half tank of gas, they could be you know, you know definitely trending towards uh, an an empty tank. 
and just a, uh, a very weird, a stressful situation here for CHP considering th those those possible details that we can only hope Not are The windows are down now. again. You see that, Desmond? Yeah. Window yeah, down. The, I don't know if you can. Yeah. Window down. Unfortunately, though, we're in that kind of sensitive airspace I mentioned mm. earlier where we have to climb up uh, just for a couple of miles here. Once we get south of the Orange Crush, we'll be able to uh, hopefully drop back down a little bit and get a, a, a better a view of what's going on. But uh, there's special airspace uh, just for Disneyland uh, that everyone has to uh, comply with. We have to get permission to go through. We have to climb. Uh, to go over it and we have to uh, and then you also have john wayne airport a very very busy airspace as well so just a couple of things that we're dealing with uh up here and uh apparently there's only one aircraft overhead now and that's the chp fixed wing their helicopter pulled off i'm unclear why that is but we just heard that uh, they just have one of their their fixed wings i believe it's a, a stationary overhead that uh, to my knowledge has a camera that's actually mounted on on the wing Hmm. And you have, uh, you know, the, the, the pilot and then a, a tactical officer as well that uh, you know, may be helping the units on the ground, letting them know what kind of traffic conditions are ahead or, you know, if they're able to, to get a visual of anything, you know, inside the vehicle, which, of course, we all want to know if there is a, a child in the vehicle at this point. But unfortunately for, you know, fixed wing aircraft, they're not you know, obviously nearly as maneuverable as helicopters and they have uh, different altitude restrictions as well. So... It's unclear why they pulled their helicopter off of this one. Uh, excuse us here. We try to maintain the shot. Um, we're coming, you can see the slower traffic though as we come down towards the heart of Orange County and the Orange Crush. And we're going to find out here in the next minute or so where this person is going to continue. If it's either going to be on the 22 towards the coast, Garden Grove, Huntington Beach, Westminster, uh, eastbound on the 22, which just goes through Santa Ana and ends at the 55, or onto the southbound 5, which will take him down towards uh, Irvine and Southern Orange County. Yes, and Desmond, for our viewers that are just joining us, this was a call that came in right around 3 o'clock of a suspected DUI driver. We have seen this driver uh, really appear to be taunting officers, rolling down the window, throwing a bag out of the window. We also saw him roll down the window. He was drinking from some type of a can and then emptied that can and dropped it in front of those officers. There have been reports of a 911 caller claiming that there was a child on this driver's lap at one point. We were not able to see in those dark windows to see if, in fact, there was a child in this car. We hope that is a mistake. We did see something white inside the car. It looked like a white material, perhaps a bag of some sort. Uh, but uh, certainly a frightening pursuit now once we heard that there may, in fact, be a child uh, not in a child uh, safety seat, but in fact on the lap of this driver. Also joining me now is my colleague Sarah Donchi. She is also joining us as we continue to cover this pursuit that has been going on for about 55 minutes, began in Rialto and now in Orange County. Yeah, Amy, shocking that, you know, I was watching your coverage earlier and stepped away and that pursuit is still continuing, although it looks like we're, you know, stopping and going here on the freeway. Uh, Desmond Shaw has been live overhead for us. And Desmond, I know you know this area fairly well. And depending on which freeway he gets on, a number of these routes tend to be very congested this time of day. I know he's sort of going the reverse commute right now, but once he, yeah. he either gets on the 22 or the five. The five is incredibly congested, especially if he heads northbound into the Los Angeles area. But yeah, that's right. And you know, we we saw this person, you know, going earlier westbound on the ten, and then immediately got back on the high volume side on the eastbound ten. So you know, just because he's going south now doesn't mean that's not going to change at the turn of a dime. But pretty slow speeds here, and he's got some room. So kind of strange. I uh, haven't seen this uh, so far. He's usually been kind of keeping pretty tight with traffic, but I, I believe at this rate, he's he's going to be going to the southbound five if he stays on this side of the roadway. The south five actually doesn't look too bad as far as traffic goes. It's fairly wide open, at least through the 55. This section of the five, there you see CHP actually holding back the public from getting involved in this. You may see that where, you know, they're coordinating on various on and off ramps uh, to uh, try to kind of corral the public from this person. but. Mm. The southbound five is actually fairly wide open down to, I believe, the El Toro wide. And it's from that point down 
uh, typically towards Mission Viejo, where you might see some of that heavier Friday traffic. Uh, folks maybe headed to the beach or, or San Diego for the weekend, but mm -hmm. uh, excuse us here for one. Can we get the, the skid out of the shot there? Thank you. Um, uh, so, okay, we're right by, you can see we're right by Angel Stadium now. Mm -hmm. And this black Mitsubishi Lancer, which has covered a ton of ground from Rialto all the way to uh, El Monte and back. And now right basically, you know, what we could call the heart of Orange County here, the Orange Crush. Mm -hmm. And looking like they're going to continue on to the southbound five and get back. And if that's the case, again, going to have some a fairly cooperative traffic uh, coming up, Sarah. Yeah, I think the concern for me at this time of the day is usually going northbound on the five and into Los Angeles County, not far from the LA County border, by the way, uh, which sits in between Diamond Bar and Brea, at least in that area. Uh, Amy, I know you were aware of the chase that we covered a few weeks ago that ended in Diamond Bar with the child in the car, and I think that is you know, one of the worst case uh, scenarios for, for all of us as we watch this. We certainly hope that that information was not accurate, but I know that has to have you stressed out about this situation for sure. Sarah, I have to tell you, it took a whole nother turn once we heard that a child could possibly be in that car. And we do want to welcome all of our viewers to an early edition of KCAL 9 News at 4 o'clock. We are following breaking news. This is the pursuit of a suspected drunk driver. This began uh, in Rialto, right around 3 o'clock this afternoon, this driver leading officers on this chase for almost an hour. We have seen this driver taunting officers, or at least what appeared to be taunting these officers as he rolled down the window. At one point, he threw a bag out. Another time, we could see him drinking from a can. We don't know what was in that can. Then he dropped the can in front of the officers. At another point, he rolled down the window and seemed to be motioning to the officers to come on, come forward. Yeah. We then learned that a 911 caller called in and said that they saw a small child on this driver's lap. Now, we have not been able to get a good look inside this car because the windows are so dark, but we did see something there in that area of almost of the center console area that was white. It looked to me, Sarah, as if it was a white bag, maybe a plastic bag. I could see it uh, flapping with the air coming in from the window, but I did not suspect at that point that it would be a child. And then to hear that a 911 caller said that they mm -hmm. saw a child really just changed everything. Oh, absolutely. I, I know the situation in Diamond Bar was similar where no one, including the deputies who were chasing that suspect, could actually see a, a child inside. They suspected at one point the child may have been in the trunk of the car in that situation. An incredibly disturbing chase that we covered live for you here on KCAL 9 several weeks ago. Now, Desmond, with this pursuit, we see sometimes uh, CHP, we see deputies, we see various police departments try and creep up as best they can to the car to get a better look inside, uh, perhaps determine whether or not there is a child in the car. Have we seen much of that throughout this pursuit? Uh, no, we, we haven't seen them get, you know, right up next to uh, the, the, the vehicle in and, you know, unfortunately wouldn't do any good anyway because the, 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 the windows of the vehicle are pitch black. But let's see what happens now. No. We're getting off of the freeway. We're getting off at Broadway. So we're in Santa Ana, just south of the Orange Crush and coming up to a stoplight. And, you know, if, if Hope we're kind of at this point. Well, I'm, I'm not sure if I hope he stays on the freeway or or off the freeway. Mm -hmm. We, it, it's not confirmed that there's there's a child in the car, but it's going to make CHP very hesitant to uh, do anything uh, if 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 they if they do suspect that they're they're not going to want to do uh, a pit maneuver, especially because the call into CHP was not just that. Uh, that the, there was a child in the car, but that supposedly he was uh, had him on his lap. So. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's kind of a what are what are they going to do situation here. Uh, they may have an opportunity to do spike strips. I'm sure that there's a lot of work being done now with Santa Ana PD and informing them that they are, you know, in their jurisdiction. Like, look, we have this pursuit. It's come a really, really long way. But we and and OK, now we just we and here we go. And so we just heard uh, Sarah and Amy that they did request a pit maneuver and that was denied. So mm -hmm. they have to get the, the permission from a higher up and they did not get permission uh, to do that. So very, very frustrating to CHP because obviously they want to bring this to an end, but uh, they have you know a lot to consider now at, at this point. Uh, okay, actually a, a, a correction, they, they denied it due to traffic and we do have some uh, pretty congested streets. Look at kind of setting up like oh, he yes. wants to do the pit maneuver, but it was denied. So maybe he's just trying to kind of creep up to see if he can see inside the vehicle, but all the windows 
Well, actually, the window's kind of down at this point, uh, setting up for a left-hand turn at 17th and Flower Street. So we're in Santa Ana on the edge of Guard Grove, west of the uh, 5 Freeway. A very, very frustrating situation here for CHP. And, you know, Desmond, I have to say, I was a little surprised that this driver at every intersection has really stopped and uh, didn't run through the light uh -huh. um, and uh, yeah. uh, uh -huh. seems to be following. But you can see that CHP cruiser right there uh -huh. on the tail. Uh -huh. That'd be pretty fast to try yeah. to hit. Oh, he's wanted to do, oh, oh, and there oh goes he the just back ripped bumper. his bumper off. Yep, there okay, goes Okay, the so bumper. obviously they got the clearance. They got the clearance to do the pit maneuver there. But uh, unfortunately, just the way he hit it, he kind of caught the bumper and, and ripped it off. So I'm surprised because sure that was a little bit faster than they like to go when they approve pit maneuvers. I think if the speed tracker was correct, it was in excess of 40 miles per hour when they tried that. So, you know, Desmond, you, you know, they have guidance. They don't like to publicize that guidance, but they have guidance uh, that tells them when it's safe to perform a pit maneuver like that. So that was pretty fast. It was. Yeah, it, it was. And, and, and we heard them, you know, trying to get the permission. So, you know, you had the, the, the officer, you know, uh, communicating through the dispatcher, you know, can I do this? Can I do this now? And at first he did not have permission when he got off the freeway, but obviously, uh, you know, they determined at, at that moment that it, they, they had an opportunity, but this is really tough. Because, I mean, look at how much traffic there is around uh, here at this point. You know, we're approaching Friday rush hour past four o'clock. And is this going to make the suspect more desperate now that he sees that CHP has suddenly more of a determination to uh, bring this to an end? Is, is he going to continue to kind of cruise around like he was on the freeway or, or, or is, it, is it going to agitate him and you know, him start uh, speeding up? And we saw him you know, do that maneuver earlier where uh, he kind of went around traffic all the way to the right to you know, make that, that wide left turn in, in front of people. So it is definitely getting more dangerous now as we're on surface streets of Santa Ana. Absolutely, and it it has been somewhat uh, comforting to see that this driver has stopped at the red lights and hasn't been too reckless when uh, he's stopped around other cars. But uh, you know, you just can't help but think if there is a child in that car, mm. what is going on inside that car and that attempted pit maneuver. As you mentioned, Desmond, you just don't know what that might spark in that driver. Will he become more desperate? Again, this is a driver that is suspected of being under the influence and uh, you just don't know what he might be willing to do at this point. Yeah, you know, what's interesting to me, Desmond, this pursuit started in Rialto. We're in Garden Grove now. That's more than 50 miles away. This has been going on for quite a while. We've been covering it for you. We do want to welcome our viewers to KCAL 9 News at 4 o'clock. I'm Sarah Donchi alongside my colleague Amy Johnson. Uh, Desmond has been watching this from the sky. This has been going on quite a while. I have to imagine uh, the CHP deputies want to put this to an end, but they have so many factors they have to consider. And now that we're on surface streets in a really busy part of Garden Grove, uh, there are people walking around, there are cars stopped. It's probably going to be pretty tricky for them to do that. But I imagine that when they see a window, they'll probably try again. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, if they could just get on, on a surface street that's not uh, particularly crowded and, and is, is not a narrow residential surface street. You know, we haven't uh, been on any uh, narrow streets. We've been pretty much on major streets the entire time. Now on Santa Ana Boulevard. At, at this moment, it looks like a pretty good uh, opportunity, but um, we'll just have to see, you know, as, as we see the units creep closer, that's generally when they're, that tells you that they're, they're wanting to set up to do a, a pit maneuver. And, the, you know, the bumper now missing. Uh, as, as well off this vehicle. Unfortunately, it was just uh, was off by just a couple of degrees when they came in with that last pit maneuver and, and just r unfortunately ripped the bumper uh, right off. As we're now on Grand Avenue, it looks like we're headed the southbound, so really getting into the heart of Santa Ana where there are some uh, congested streets. As I look ahead, uh, not too much traffic on Grand Avenue itself. And, oh, well, we're up at about 50 miles an hour. Uh, so, you know, kind of semi semi dangerous here on these surface streets as far as as speeds are going. And he does but, seem a yeah, little more much? aggressive, Desmond. Uh, a little earlier, he seemed to be stopping behind the cars. Now he is making sure he gets out of that intersection, uh, running through stop signs, uh, red lights, going around the traffic, it seems. And uh, just as I say that, he stops at another intersection uh, and takes off. But. Uh, you just don't know how desperate this driver is at this mm -hmm. point after more than an hour of this pursuit. 
Yeah, you know, stopping at one red light and then blowing through a stop sign at, at, at another one and, you know, going under the speed limit at one moment and then, you know, throwing litter out the window the next. Now, here's the window down. And mm. just, just all the way in here to try and, and, and see. I, I see the white thing that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if that's, what, what, what is that? Is that is that a child wrapped up in a blanket or? It, I, I can't tell if it's on his lap or if it's kind of sitting near the, the, the center console. There was just that one call mm -hmm. into CHP, potentially, uh, 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 about that. Uh, he does have something hanging from the mirror as well, mm -hmm. but just below that, there is, uh, it kind of looks like, like a blanket or something, and he's smoking now. Okay, looks like he's uh, smoking and, and ashing a, a, a cigarette there. Well, we, we hope Just that was a mistake. I, I could see how somebody might see that object and think that it was a child, and we certainly are hoping that's a mistake, but with the tint as dark as it, as it is, there's no way that's legal tint. With a tint as dark as it is, it's really hard to tell, and you know, I would have to believe uh, that CHP has done their due diligence to try and determine whether or not there is a child in the car. Even if we can't see them, you know, they have air assets, they have other units on the ground, they may have gotten a better look into the car here. Uh, and certainly if there was a child in the car, there would be a number of things that they would have to consider. And it, it may even be that they might pull back a bit. I haven't seen that in the time that we've been covering this in the last few minutes. But, uh, you know, Amy, of course, that adds a level of anxiety to these pursuits. We certainly want this to end quickly and safely above all. We certainly do, but the options are very limited for these officers because they do have to be very careful if, in fact, there is a child in there. But even if not, they want to be safe for everyone that is in the area and, uh, you know, Pit maneuvers and uh, spike strips are not always an option for them, but it does look at this point like the driver is slowing down, and uh, we would like to believe that uh, the driver is coming to a stop, but uh, mm. this is a chance when we can kind of look through that uh, front windshield and, and Just now. when you have a bit of hope that they're going to stop, this person just keeps on going, and they've done a few things. Uh, Des, I know, I think we're still in Garden Grove, but they've done a few things like that where it looks like for a second they really are trying to, to get you know, to get away, and then they slow down again. Yeah, there's really zero hope of, of this person uh, getting away. Here you see, I believe, Santa Ana PD uh, that is uh, here as well, and looks like that may mm. be a, possibly a law enforcement motorcycle. So, and there, oh, yeah, look at him. Out. He's he's actually yeah. out with weapons drawn, right? Uh, just waiting as, as they wait at this red light. So we've got multiple agencies getting involved mm -hmm. uh, in this one, but. There's no reason to believe that this person is uh, giving up right now, just sitting at a at a red light and just see how, how long they sit here. Out here with weapons drawn, like uh, conducting what they would call a, a felony stop, but this person doesn't have their hands out the window. And I think the engine's still running, so there's no indication that, that he is gonna be giving up. And they actually did bring another chopper in overhead. This is now Anaheim Police mm -hmm. with their chopper overhead. Uh, it goes by the call sign Angel. They're they're over ahead on this one as well. So really zero chance for this person to get out here. You can you see a little bit of smoke uh, an arm coming out, out of the window. The, the window, yeah, an arm, and he was he was ashing uh, what looked like a, a cigarette earlier. And, and Desmond, uh, if we see a little are bit of smoke of, coming out there, but if we are off of Cabrillo right. Park Drive and First, that would be right off of the on the right outside of the five freeway. Is that where we are? If you could give us a, a bit of a, a locator here. Yeah, we're actually, uh, we're just over on the east side of the five, but we're looking on the west side of the uh, five freeway. And there we go, with uh, making a right-hand oh, turn man. now as the light uh, it was look looking like maybe he was waiting for the light to turn so he could turn left, and then he decided to turn right. So right. there we go, going over the five. So actually, we were just on the on the east side of the five, and look at that. Now, it just, yep, deciding to get back on to the uh, southbound five. So a little bit of meter traffic here. This is where you're supposed to wait for the light to turn, to, but he just blows right by that. Mm -hmm. uh, southbound on the five, and uh, we'll be through the 55 and then into the city of Irvine. And you know, Desmond, this again reminded me of the earlier times when it appears that this driver is just taunting these officers, you know, rolling down that window, putting the arm out. You just wonder, uh, you know, what he is saying, if anything, to these officers that are nearby. And then, you know, it appears that he's going to give up and then took off again. Now we're showing you video of earlier, and that is when 
Officers attempted to do a pit maneuver. Uh, this was at a, a pretty uh, fast rate of speed for mm -hmm. a pit maneuver. They were able to catch the back of the car and knocked off the back bumper, Sarah. But of course, the car did not stop. And really, they're just hoping that this driver runs out of gas or gives up because, uh, you know, the pit maneuver and the spike strips are certainly difficult, especially if there is a child in this car. Yeah, just to let our viewers know that was some video from earlier. Right now the pursuit is on the freeway. We're going to get back to live pictures in just a moment, uh, but that was just one of the many tense moments here that since we've been covering this pursuit that started in Rialto, very, very far away, more than 50 miles away from where the pursuit is now. Um, at last check, the driver had gotten on to the 55 freeway. Uh, you know, Amy, the 55 gets a little bit crowded. You can take the 55 down to the beach cities and it tends to get a little bit crowded. Uh, we're back to live pictures right now. So Desmond, now that we have you back, can you tell us exactly where you are now? Yeah, so they actually got off at the next exit here. This is Newport Avenue, so right off of the 555 interchange. And you see all of the units involved, including a motorcycle officer, which we do not see uh, very often uh, on these pursuits. If that is a uh, Anaheim PD or a CHP, I'm, I'm not clear, but you see all of the units involved in this one. Uh, hopefully just looking for the you know perfect opportunity to to do a pit maneuver but it's just so strange the 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 tactics of this a suspect you know sitting at red lights and other times you know blowing through stop signs he has to know there's there's no getting away so if perhaps he's headed somewhere mm -hmm. where he wants to bring this uh, to an end maybe in front of friends or family not an uncommon thing that we see with specs okay and now making a, another u turn just as he definitely seems to want to keep it to the freeway. Uh, mm -hmm. If, if, if uh, we'll see if he decides to get back on and off of Newport Avenue, I believe he there is a ramp now oh. turning around again. Oh boy. So we're just kind of going in circles. So we're in uh, Tustin. Back southbound on Newport Avenue. Are we in Tustin yep. here, Desmond? Yeah, city of Tustin. And yeah, under, on the border of Tustin and Costa Mesa. If right. this driver is familiar with the area or not, and uh, just trying to figure out his next move, which way he wants to go, if he should get back on a freeway, it's. It's always interesting to find out later if, in fact, the driver is familiar with the area or not. And this is certainly a long way away, as you mentioned, Sarah, from where this all began in Rialto more than an hour ago. Yeah, and, and just because we're in Orange County, you know, the streets are a little wider than when we're following these pursuits in the heart of Los Angeles, for example. You know, these are some busy surface streets in Tustin, obviously Costa Mesa, very busy shopping and eating district over there. A lot of people out walking around on their lunch break, a lot of shopping centers, uh, you, you know, so just because there's a little bit more room to navigate than some of the other pursuits we've covered in the last few weeks, uh, it doesn't mean that it's not incredibly dangerous, not just for the officers and the deputies who are pursuing the suspect, for, but for the people who are just going about their day uh, and Desmond you're right it looks like this suspect has been trying to hop on and off the freeway I don't know if they're trying to evade the officers but it's really difficult to get into the mind of a suspect uh, especially given the want uh, suspected DUI here we don't know what this person was drinking we saw them tossing cans out of the window earlier we've been replaying that video but uh, this person has been behaving erratically to say the least Desmond yeah it very erratically uh, you know for the first probably half of the pursuit was uh, as Desmond was pursued, just, you know, cruising. Uh, I, I um, you, you guys have me. We do, Desmond. I was going to pick up from what you yeah. were saying that the uh, driver was uh, really controlled at one point, going high rates of speed, but really, for the most part, was following uh, the proper speed and uh, stopping at uh, you know the intersection. So now we see this driver now pulling into what looks like another uh, parking lot, a gas station. Yeah, pulling into a gas station and using his turn signal too. So it's just very weird uh, as well. Uh, I mean, it's, is is there really any uh, attempt here to evade officers, or is he just you know dragging this out as long as he can? Whoa, uh, a little nerve wracking here with folks in this shopping center. Oh gosh. And they're just just out here you know finishing some shopping, and now here comes this guy, and they're like, what's going on? Right. Uh, and now they see all of the units behind them, and they're like, oh wow. Uh, this is actually a, a pursuit going on right in front of my eyes. So mm -hmm. uh, certainly nerve wracking for, for people out here uh, at this point. And, and it's very confounding what this, this suspect is doing if he's just trying to, to drag this out. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm guessing that CHP is you know, perhaps determined at this point that, that there's not a child in the car just based on, we saw them trying to do that pit maneuver right, earlier. Right, that makes and a lot of sense. And if they're waiting for, 
Yeah, and if they're just waiting for another opportunity to to initiate that. Yeah, this of is course, Walnut the, and, the, the, and Red Hill in, in Tustin. You know, I mentioned the shopping centers. There are a lot of shopping centers down here in Tustin, just like that, where you have, you know, an anchor store or whatever, and you have some smaller businesses surrounding, and a lot of people who walk around, do their errands there, what have you. And Desmond, you know, I could tell in your voice that, that you were a little bit anxious when that was happening, and so was I, because that's where we really see some problematic situations. You know, it's dangerous for drivers. It's really dangerous for pedestrians to be caught up in a situation like this. Now, Desmond, is the passenger yeah. side window down at this point? Is that what I'm noticing? It yeah, it is. It is down. We're still uh, kind of in a complicated airspace area now with with John Wayne, and so we're trying to coordinate with them. And once, once uh, hopefully we get out of this particularly bad spot for us, we can mm -hmm. uh, give you a, a better shot. But just to let you know, that's why our we're kind of shooting a little farther out out the lens right now because we're basically on the final approach for John Wayne Airport, and they've got you know planes coming in for landing, so we have to wait for those planes to get by, and then we can. Mm -hmm. Get closer and we'll see if we can get another, you know, better look inside this vehicle, maybe uh, drop a little bit of altitude if possible. But uh, going kind of creeping back towards the freeway. And I, I think that I'm just have thinking that this person is just kind of dragging things out uh, at this point, not making any real serious attempt to get away. They've got to know that, that the jig is up eventually. So if they're just going to enjoy these last bits of freedom and, and burn whatever gas is in the tank that certainly seems to be uh, how this one is going we haven't seen the suspect on the phone at all we saw him throw a, a bag out the window smoking a cigarette mm -hmm. uh, drinking something and then throwing that can out right in front of officers uh, very very weird uh, demeanor a lot of times with these suspects the, the, they there's you know some other underlying issue as far as you know outstanding charges or warrants or things like that and, you know, we also had the, the report earlier that, that this person may have actually called 911 on themselves. That was some of the, the radio traffic that we heard, one of the most uh, bizarre things I've ever heard. And now looking like maybe he's going to go northbound on the 5. Uh, you see CHP actually going the wrong way. We'll see if we can get to the other side here mm -hmm. because I'm just noticing CHP as they're going. I saw them go the wrong way under that bridge. Maybe they're going to see if they can uh, pin him in before he gets back on the freeway. Right, that's certainly, uh, so you know, bear with us. Here's the five, w once once he gets on the five, they're, you know, that person has the ability, if they're going north or south, they can, they can really end up anywhere. The 55, of course, ends down in Newport if he was to head southbound. But, you know, I, you know, I really don't know, Desmond, if there is an end game here or Amy, because, you know, Amy, you've been covering this pursuit for, for how long now? And we've just seen sort of circles and, and and aimless driving at this point. Almost an hour and 20 minutes, and it seems that they're taking a lot of time underneath this overpass. So you wonder if this might be the time that this driver is deciding to stop or once again uh, really taunting officers and stopping for a while and then takes off again. It's just really been uh, unpredictable, and we see it right there. North 5, North 5, North heading, 5, turn around. Heading back hey. on the uh, northbound 5. Right. after just waiting and um, I would think with that long break there where he's sitting there officers are able to see in and know whether or not there is in fact a child in that car at least you hope that I know the windows are dark but uh, they have better resources than we do at times to uh, see what's really going on inside mm -hmm. a car but uh, I really think that this person is uh, gonna have to run out of gas or really just decide it's time to stop because he has been keeping them on this pursuit for an hour and 20 minutes. Again, it started in Rialto and uh, gone through, you know, the Inland Empire, L.A. County and now Orange County. And um, it has been a very interesting pursuit. As Desmond was mentioning, there were early reports that this person might have called 911 themselves saying that uh, they were drinking and now driving uh, after leaving a bar. But uh, we were not able to confirm that just yet. But we do know another 911 caller said that they saw a small child in the car. We are not able to see a small child in that car, but uh, this person is suspected of driving under the influence and uh, just does not want to stop for these officers. Yeah, Desmond, so we're going northbound, I believe, on the 5 freeway right now, which could take us up uh, eventually up into the Anaheim area once again. So again, doing circles in a sense, uh, sort of covering the gamut of cities in Orange County. Um, did he just hop over to the 55? Yeah, hopping up to the 55 freeway, so headed through 
now back towards uh, Tustin and Santa Ana. Kind of did that at the uh, last second. And again, we're, we're right on John Wayne's uh, final approach. We'll uh, see if we can get to the other side of the freeway. But this has been really difficult, not just for officers, but for us to keep up with this one, just because of where this person decided to, uh, you know, run, run from the police. Uh, so bear with us here as we uh, come back around, but was going towards the uh, northbound 55 should be coming up the uh, here at just any moment. Actually, maybe this is going to take him. Well, no, I decided to get off the freeway. I think wow. this is going to be 17th Street or 4th Street. Uh, my map is saying so. Yeah, really, uh, really squirrely driving here uh, for sure. Looking like he's going to get on the freeway and then getting back off off surface streets, and it makes it really difficult for officers to try to. I mean, if they've made the determination that there is actually no child in the car, then you know, more options are back on the table if they want to use spike strips. We were sitting in Santa Ana for a, a really long time. I have to imagine that uh, dispatchers were trying to coordinate with Santa Ana and Garden Grove PD about maybe, you know, having any any spike strips uh, available. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, these officers probably did not have any uh, spike strips in, in their vehicles. And let's see if that motorcycle was still uh, on this one as well. The, the motorcycle may have dropped out. But we're on 4th Street, so back in, you know, crowded area mm -hmm. of Santa Ana coming now westbound away uh, from the 55 freeway. And again, we see this driver stopping at a red light. And, uh, you know, a lot of times I think our viewers see this and they wonder, well, why aren't they, you know, pulling in front of him and, and blocking him right. in? But that is against protocol. They do not get in front of the other officers zero, in case zero. of a uh, line of fire if they were to open fire. And so... That is not something that they do. We are showing you on the right side of the screen earlier video in which we saw the driver throw a bag out of the window. Mm -hmm. Then we just see him dropping a can. We do not know what type of can that is, but we did see him drinking from that can before then dropping it right in front of those officers. Sarah, it really looked like he was just taunting those officers as we keep seeing him do as he stops and uh, takes a little break and then takes off again. Right. So if we are on uh, West 4th Street, Desmond, he presumably could take that to downtown Santa Ana, obviously very busy area down there or back to one of the freeways. You have the five, you have the 55. If he was to head northbound, he could head up to the 22. Um, so any number of directions here, and it's been hard to predict what this driver is going to do, but it looks like CHP it, yeah. may be uh, here we go again, pit. another pit maneuver. Uh -oh. There we go. Oh, Textbook. oh, whoa, wow. whoa. Look at this still going backwards here. Oh, well, a, a, a very successful pit maneuver. Uh, incredibly, you know, uh, nobody doors uh, open. in the way. And look at that. Hands up. And it, it looks like he is, uh, he is out. He is out of the car, and that was... All it took, CHP finally found the perfect opportunity to do that pit maneuver, and that was a, a fantastic one. It didn't crash into any other vehicles. There were no pedestrians out there. A perfectly executed. So now he's out walking around, but he's walking around without his hands up. So right. this uh, situation is still pretty tense. In fact, he's, he's, okay, there we go. Now his hands are up. And we're starting to see uh, some compliance here just off of uh, 4th Street. And what a pit maneuver that was, Desmond. You know, I, I, I did breathe a sigh of relief because the car was skidding out of control there. And had there been a pedestrian on that sidewalk or walking there in, in this area just to the left of our screen here, that could have been uh, bad. But I assume that CHP had eyes overhead and they gave clearance because they knew that there was relatively low risk of that. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. They, uh, they, were, they were sitting at that, at that light long enough uh, that they were, you know, able to look uh, ahead and see everything and basically connect the dots and say, okay, I think this is going to be uh, a, a pretty good opportunity, especially coming away from a red light at low speeds, and it really doesn't get any more perfect than that. But but now I see he had his hands up, and now he's just kind of uh, sitting on the sidewalk. Uh, so huh. not exactly uh, com compliant. I mean, we're glad that he's out of the car, but they're they're giving him commands right now to, you know, put his hands above his head and, and show him if he has anything you know, uh, along his waistline, and he's just completely ignoring them. It, uh, you see them out here with less than lethal force drawn, and and we'll see how long uh, this kind of odd standoff continues. Well, Desmond, it, it kind of goes with what we've been seeing all along, where it almost seems like he's taunting these officers. They're telling him to, you know, raise his hands. He sits down, hands are on the ground, and it's almost as if there aren't officers there at all. 
And you have to wonder yeah. if this is because he was, in fact, under the influence. We're showing our viewers on the right here that pit maneuver again so you can see exactly how that went down. But really just a perfectly executed pit maneuver there. Yeah, ab absolute perfection. And mm -hmm. now we see CHP with their less than lethal uh, force out here. You see that that rifle right there with it that has a red strap. And so that, that may be a, a beanbag gun. We saw an officer with what looked like he was holding a taser uh, in his hand. They don't, they don't have any reason to believe that this person is armed, but they're, you know, it's, it's unclear if, if this person has a knife in their waistband or, or a gun or anything like that. So they're not just going to immediately rush in. And, you know, these officers, they want to give these suspects every opportunity to, to comply. If that takes, you know, five seconds or, or an hour, uh, you know, they they will give them a, a lot of leeway because they, they want to be absolutely sure that that, you know, they're they're, they're following protocol in, in a situation like this. But yeah, this guy, you know, not even looking at it, just, just kind of gazing towards the right and mm -hmm. uh, it, it, extremely casual does make you wonder, you know, when we say under the influence, that could be a, a lot of things, you know, it could if it's if it's alcohol or, or, or if it's narcotics. And that was what initiated this chase out of Rialto. And, into LA County now into uh, Orange County, but it's not often that we see suspects uh, just be this this brazen, especially after you know the pit maneuver and, and getting out of the car and acting like they want to surrender, and then now nah, I'm just going to sit out here on the sidewalk and incredibly and enjoy casual given the Orange circumstances County. that are playing out right before our eyes here live on this edition of KCAL 9 News at 4 o'clock. Desmond, I do want to give our viewers a bit of an update. So I believe if we're on 4th Street in Santa Ana between uh, Tustin and Cabrillo Park, we're not far off the freeway. And, and he didn't make it very far, it seemed, when he got off of the freeway there, off of the 55. Is that where we are right now? Yes, yeah, you're, you're correct, sir. We're just, I'd say, maybe 500 feet or so west of the uh, 55 freeway. Uh, so very, very close to lanes. A lot of office parks here, a lot of folks, you know, getting out of work right now and, and they get out to their vehicle and, and they may not be able to get on the street because uh, this guy has decided that uh, he just wants to uh, basically be as, as aggravating to officers as, as he possibly can by uh, sitting out here. And I'll just why not to show you uh, the officer standing by and still, you know, shouting commands to him, you know, waving him back. You saw the, uh, the, the officer there in the middle you know, trying to motion him, him to come back. So uh, they may have to maybe wait for a, a, a unit to get out here with, with a shield or something before they, they want to come over or a, or a crisis negotiator. Uh, well, now he's got his hands up behind his head. So maybe he just needed a, well, let's hope that he just needed a few minutes to, you know, cool down and collect himself and, and that he is going to uh, surrender here. But uh, if he is, he's, taking a very roundabout way of doing it if, if that's what he's doing. And Desmond, I know that you were keeping uh, the camera on this suspect. Have you seen any movement at all towards that car? Uh, we had reports, uh, as many of our viewers have heard us talking about, the chance that there was a child in that car. A 911 caller said that they saw a small child on this driver's lap during this pursuit. Uh, we were not able to see a child in the car. The windows are very dark. Have you seen any movement at all around the car as if someone might be trying to look and see if there's anyone else in the car? Yeah, I haven't seen any movement around the car or anyone approaching the car. Uh, but now, okay, this is, well, he should be walking backwards okay. towards yeah. officers. And look at now you see the, we see the canine officer, or the, the, the canine unit out here. And a lot of times you get, you get that vehicle out there, that vehicle, that canine out there snarling. And that's what it takes a lot of times for these guys to finally hang it up. And here we go. Uh, finally deciding to surrender. He just needed a few minutes. He knew the jig was up and wanted a few more minutes by himself before he 